Welcome back to another episode of Chatting with Kai. I'm your host, Kai, and today I have a special guest here with me today to indulge in some more conversations. You can introduce yourself. <laughs> hey, y'all. What's up? It's your girl, Trinity. You want to shout out your IG or something like that? Oh, y'all can follow me on Instagram at the Trinity Ross. Perfect, perfect. So it's um it's come to my my mind that yesterday was your birthday. It was. You had fun? <laughs> I did. I had a blast. <laughs> what you do? Um, so Saturday night I went to dinner with my friend Jazz mm -hmm. and we had fun. And then Sunday we went to brunch, me and um, a couple of my friends. And we kinda had like a little kickback game night. Um, on oh, Sunday shit. night, oh, shit. yeah, I got drunk. God. Man, look, I don't know how I'm here right now. Okay, <laughs> I really don't. <laughs> My bounce back game is real strong. Hey, I respect that though. I appreciate you for coming out too. Cause of shit, course. if it was my birthday less today, I would not have came. <laughs> but I was like, yo, give me like a day or two. I got you like in a week from now. But yeah. I appreciate you for coming out for sure. Of course. So, uh, boom, let's get started. Let's get right into it. So, how long have you been going to Clark? So I'm a junior. I've been at Clark for three years now. Um, yeah, Clark has been Clarking. How Clark, <laughs> how Clark been treating you, like, work-wise, stuff like that? I feel like everybody I bring on here, they always talk about Clark, so I might as well get you to talk about it, too. <laughs> My experience at Clark, it's it's been a learning one. Um, mm -hmm. I would say that it's brought me a lot of great opportunities, um, a lot of great people in my life that I didn't really necessarily knew that know that I needed, um, and yes, yeah, it's, it's not easy. It's not like perfect. It has its mistakes and its ups and downs, downs. But I wouldn't have it any other way. I don't think I'd be who I am today if I didn't come to Clark. So talk to me about like how it is when you're like burnt out. Like handling all types of like activities, organizations, stuff like that. Cause I know you, you're like very busy. You're like top five <laughs> busiest on campus type shit. Like every time I see you, you're just like, oh, I gotta go here, I gotta go here. So like, talk to me. Like, how does that like affect you? So I would say, like, for me, being who I am, it's not easy. And I know a lot of people, I don't say necessarily look up to me, but they're just like, oh my gosh, train, you're so this and you're so that. So it's not easy. Um, I'm still, like, as a human being, trying to still learn how to balance, you know, like, mm -hmm. being a college student, not only academically, but, you know, student leadership-wise, too. Um, also trying to handle business on the professional side, you know, with internships and jobs and, you know, all these different companies that I'm working with. Um, it's it's a kind lot. of, it's a lot. It is a lot. And then what doesn't help is when people like tell you like, oh, we're like, we're so proud of you. And like, you know, keep up the good work. Now you kind of like, dang, like people really be, you know, like kind of looking up to me and it's like, you don't want to just stop because yeah. now they just like, dang, like what happened? Like what's going on? You know? So it's not easy. It's definitely a work in progress and I'm still trying to figure it out myself. It's to the point where, like, you kind of, like, spreading yourself thin. Like, yeah, I am. you just, like, you got to be here, you got to be here, you got to be there. Like, you kind of can't have time just to yourself. Yeah. It's like when you do get time to yourself, all you want to do is sleep. You just, like, leave me alone. I just want to rest and sleep and do absolutely nothing. But for me, that barely happens. I barely have sleep. that. It, sleep. Like, the only time I get sleep for real is at night. That's the only time I get sleep. I barely had time to, like take naps and do all these things. Like, I'm always ripping and running with everybody, like, literally. Hey, I got a list of things here, though, like, when it comes to, like, spreading yourself down. I want you to, like, let me know how you feel about each one, right? Okay. So, obviously, we went over the first one, burning out due to over committing yourself to activities and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Lack of sleep. I feel like you literally just talked about that. Like, literally, like, you're losing sleep. Mm -hmm. The first thing that comes to mind when you're going to sleep is, like, dang, I literally just did this. I got to do this tomorrow, like. Really, it's like one of the worst <laughs> feelings. <laughs> let's talk. Let's get into the like social isolation part of it. Like you're around so many people all day. Like you kind of like lose track of yourself. Like has that ever happened to you for real? Mm, yeah, it's you are surrounded by a lot of people. I wouldn't even say just in a student leadership aspect. I think on a professional and business level too. You're surrounded by so many people, and 
you know, some people may look at it like look at it as, oh, like, you know, she's not approachable or oh she like she has an attitude when yeah, meanwhile R B F A. Yeah. And then meanwhile whole time you just kind of you just maybe found out the worst news of your life or something. But it's like you trying to still push through and, you know, see it through. But you know, it's like you can't help but feel the emotions and, you know, mm-hmm. feel the way you feel and that is something that a lot of people that get busy like kind of struggle with, like how to just let their emotions just out and just feel the way that they feel and then just, you know, learn and move on from there. That's true. You ever like been in a, like a position where someone had asked you to do so many things and you just like couldn't say no? Because me personally, I'm like the type <laughs> of person, I'm like, bro, I got you. I got you. I got you. But like you can't be there for everybody. Yeah. That's like the spreading your thin part. Yeah. So I, yeah. saying no, you feel like saying no is definitely necessary. It's necessary, but it's hard. I know. It, it can be hard. I know because people come at you like with like sad eyes, <laughs> like, "Bro, can you please do this for me? Can you please? Can you please?" And it'd be so hard to say no, so it's like you just say yes because it's like I don't know. But I'm a, I, I like helping people, mm-hmm. you know. So like if somebody come and ask me, "Oh, Trent, can you do this for me?" and I actually can do it, I'm like, "Yeah, like of course." I, especially if I don't have nothing going on. If I have something going on, then I'll tell them, like, I'll be like, you know, I have to handle this. You know, I'll help you with this later on. But I, I'm i not really the type of person that says no for real. If I do say no, it's because I genuinely got something else going on. Yeah, because you don't want to be that type of person that's saying, like, no all the time. And then, like, they can't trust you to do anything. And then they just, like, you lose that type of friendship. Right. Because people take, like, acts of kindness and stuff like that as, like, a friendship. I'm like, bro, like, I could literally be your friend texting you, calling you. I could do other things. But, like, just because I don't do something for you don't mean I'm not your friend for real. Like, right. Going into a true friends topic, like, let's talk about it. <laughs> how you, how are you going to find out who is really your true friend, especially nowadays? Like, you never know. Like, people are really double-sided face, bro. Yeah, like, they are. Like, when it comes to friendships, like, for me, friendships are very important to me because especially when it comes to, like, lady friends because mm, I grew up mm, as mm, the baby. <laughs> I grew up as the baby girl and the only girl. So me having like females in my life, it was really just like my mom and like my grandmother. Like those are the women that I had in my life. And then it was just like my friends are the ones that I considered my sisters. And I didn't have too many friends that I did consider like a sister to me. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. Finding friends in like today's generation, it can be so hard sometimes because you really think like in your heart, like, yeah, we're really cool. Like, that's really my girl whole time like she backdooring you like yeah. you know what i'm saying like she doing some grimy shiesty stuff and it's just like dang like i really really fucked with her but now it's like you know and it ain't it ain't easy when you lose a friend either like it's not, it's not and nobody all. nobody talk about that they, a lot of people don't talk about like moving on like after you lose a friend, like that's hard, especially when you and your friend have spent time together. Like y'all been cool for a while. That is so hard because it's just like, dang, not saying like you got to act like they did to you, but it's just like, dang, like we don't talk no more. We don't speak no more. You know, she she just be looking at me and it's like, I'll be looking at her, but we don't ever say nothing to each other. Like that's literally like the life of every college student walking up and down, like the promenade, like you, I'll look at you. I know you, you know me. That's that. I think I was talking to you about that before. Like, bro, say what's up. <laughs> yeah. Like, bro, I'm looking right at you. Like, you're right. looking back at me. Like, just say what's up, bro. Right. Like, I'm not going to hit you. Like, right. I'm not. I'm not a bad person. Mm-hmm. I just got a bad face because I'm walking to class. It's like eight a.m. Like, right. And then I hate some people. They act like they can't speak. Like, you can speak. You. I hate people that be like, oh, well, they got to speak to me first. Oh, okay, well, you can be waiting all day yeah. then, babe, because I'm <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm not going to be speaking first to you every single time. You can speak. I'm like, how old are you? Uh, 20? Right. And you can't talk to me? I'll be like, you got a, you got a mouth, right? Yeah. Okay, use it. <laughs> like, what? Bro, like, That'd be crazy. Wait, so where did you grow up? In Dallas. In Dallas, the South. Well, uh, I say Dallas, but people from Dallas, Texas, they know Cedar Hill. Yeah. Okay. So down south, I've been told, like, is Southern hospitality, at least growing up. I feel like it's dead now. Mm -hmm. But, like, growing up, when you walk into a room, you address somebody. You say, like, how you doing? Stuff like that. You feel like people that come down from the north, like, they don't really, like, 
do that. Yeah. <laughs> or no. I ain't, I ain't gonna lie. No disrespect. No disrespect to none of my folks up north. Okay, y'all have y'all own way of living. But when y'all come to the south, some of the stuff y'all do is so disrespectful. And I'm like, you couldn't grow up where I grew up at, cause like in the like I'm from Dallas, but my family is from like northern Louisiana, like the country part of Louisiana. And when I say anytime we walk in the room, hey everybody, how y'all doing? Mm-hmm. Or when we walk out or leave, you say bye. Like you don't just walk out, leave, and go on about your day. Like you, like you let people know it's a way of respect. Like it's a sign of respect. I mean, for me, like even though like I'm a young adult and I feel like I'm not a kid anymore, I still say yes, ma'am, and no, ma'am to like people that are older than me. And yeah. I said it to like one lady. She actually wasn't that old, but I just <laughs> it's a habit that I have. And she was just like, you don't have to say yes, ma'am. And I was like, I'm sorry. I was like, it's just like a sign of respect that I have that my mom, my dad taught me. So yeah, I don't know about the I don't know about the north folk. Y'all, y'all different. Uh, all right, so let me tell you my POV, right? Mm-hmm. So I think growing up, I actually did say, used to say, like, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, stuff like that. But over a point of time, it's like people tell me, like, stop saying it because they'll be like, bro, you're making them feel old. And I'm like, how would you feel if someone said, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, and you're like, you're still young? But I mean, and now, yes, I might feel some type of way back because I'm young, but I feel like when you start, honestly, when you hit 30, People who have the right to say yes, ma'am, no, man, yes, sir, no, sir. Like, they can say that to you. Like, you're not, like, you're young, but you're not, like, in your 20s. Like, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? But why are you listening to what society say? That's new. Why, why, why are you listening to what society say? They tell you jump off a bridge, you're going to go jump off a bridge. Hell yeah. I mean, nah. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, I understand that. Mm-hmm. But let's talk about, like, like you said, leaving leaving a room is just say like I right, say your condolences, say like you left the room type shit. Mm-hmm. Me personally, I don't know how to say bye. Like I'll like for me, I'll be like I'll catch you or I'll see you later. Like it's no like really good way of saying goodbye for me. Maybe that's because I'm up, up north and all we do is just be like right, I'm gonna catch you or quick dap up and then we just leave. But down here, I feel like I gotta learn how to like be more nicer to people. Like, <laughs> Are you trying to say all oh, like south like southern people we just just nice we just too nice that's what you're saying the people that take, the people that <laughs> <laughs> you trying to say we too nice you are not sleek I see what you're trying to do I no I like that though in there. I like that though because like when I'm ordering some food and I get like a, a nice little name like uh, beloved or something like that I'd be like oh that really touched my heart like I'm nothing yeah. like yo what you want What's yeah food? very hard number three yeah I bet. And then just go from there. But down here, I like I like y'all vibe, bro. I mess with it. Yeah, I'm, I'm a country. I'll be like, I'll be like, thank you, honey bun. Like I say stuff like that. Honey I'll be bun. Like, honey bun. I like if he, if people know me in real life, they know. Like they'll be like, oh, thank you, Trent. I'm like, you're welcome, honey bun. Like I don't know. It's just kind of that's what y'all do. Y'all be calling each other like sweets names, like dumpling and honey bun and lemon square and stuff like that. Like that's what y'all do. <laughs> I peeped that because, like, all the grandmas, you're like, oh, it's okay, Lemon Square. It's okay. Lemon Square. I, okay, I ain't never heard that one before. It's like the Lemon bit, Square is crazy. They make you feel warm inside, though. I like that. Like, I mess with that. For real. I mean, I guess. I guess. Mm, I guess. But. All right, so. A smile, right? Mm-hmm. You got to love a smile. Yeah. You see someone walk in a room, like, like, a big, nice, bright smile. You love seeing a smile, right? Mm-hmm. Do you feel like smiling too much is like a burden on yourself? Like you smile way too much, even when you don't need to. You feel like that's a burden on yourself? No, I don't think so. I think people that smile a lot, I feel like that's like the greatest thing, um, mm-hmm. especially in today's like society in today's world. Like we need more people that do smile because we do have a lot of people with RBFs. Like me, I, I mean, I, I don't think I have an RBF, but I do. I Wait, do stop talking real quick. Stop talking real quick. Eh, not really. You don't really got it. Really. <laughs> I think I think because you're not trying. I, I think because you're not trying to do it. But like, go ahead. You're funny for that. I was <laughs> like, wait, what? <laughs> um, I somewhat think I have an RBF. Um, but I would just say like I wish that I would smile more. Um, but mm-hmm. I think a reason for me with that is just because of my insecurity with like my smile because when I was younger, like I had a gap and. I really did not want to smile until I had braces in my mouth. And when I got braces, all I did was smile. And then when I got them off, I just smiled even more. So I think 
that also plays a role into it with some people just maybe because like you know their teeth you know how like society is on my yeah. per- pearly whites you yeah. know what i'm saying and, you know and, yeah. and not everybody got money to be doing all that so hey the real ones know though like if you had braces growing up i was a brace face too shit i claim it like hey brace face game all the way <laughs> Hey, look, if you had braces growing up, bro, that was probably, like, the most, like, annoying experience. You probably had, like, food always in your teeth. Someone mm-hmm. always telling you, like, bro, you got something in your bracket, just that and a third. You ever break a bracket? Hell yeah, bro. Are you serious? Yes. Am I the only one that never broke a bracket? Bro, because you were such a goody two-shoes, bro. Like, bro <laughs> when, your doctor told you, when your dentist told you don't buy the apple, you didn't bite the apple, bro. It's not. I what? didn't care, bro. <laughs> I didn't care. I was like, bro. Why I'm, would you do that? If they tell you don't do it, why would you do it? Hey, you know, you know, uh, bro. When I first when I first got them, they was like, uh, "Don't eat apples, don't eat hard foods." Probably try not to eat this, that, and the third. I'm like, that's like damn near half my my uh, my food <laughs> diet, bro. What are you talking about? I'm eating all this. I know they told me something like you have to drink with like a straw, like you can't hell no drink. I'm like, bro, <laughs> yeah, what? Bro, every I, single time I don't have a straw. Every single time I'm drinking something, especially when I'm at home, like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they missing with that. But breaking your bracket is crazy. Y- y'all just some badass kids. Y'all just bad. <laughs> you know you grew up with them kids that used to have like the little black, um, like the little uh, cap on their teeth, like the silver caps on their teeth. Oh, like, yeah. I was, a, I was a, um, a silver cap kid, too. Silver cap kid. That was me. That was me. How you even get Like I've always wondered, like, how you get that? Because all the bad kids used to have it. Like You eat too much damn sugar. You eat a lot <laughs> of candy growing up. That's exactly how you get it. <laughs> Like, you was eating, like, hella candy, like, Starburst, yes. all that stuff? Not all the candy, but, like, I used to eat, like, the, what's it called? Like, the sour shit. Like, sour and, like, sugary stuff. Like, it, Airhead Extremes and, like, sour straws. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I used to eat all that. Bro, so you're telling me, like, your tongue wasn't, like, annoying you all day? Because I know when I eat, you know them little, the sour strips, right? Mm-hmm. If you eat them over and over and over again, you're going to lose, like, feeling in yes. your tongue and stuff like that. Yes. Like, I hated that so much. Yeah, bad. I hated that too. But guess what? I still ate them. <laughs> <laughs> bro, that, that's so bad, bro. That's so bad. Like, it is bad. But I was a kid. I didn't know no better. I love candy. All right. I know this is probably going to be a really good question, for real. Because I know you're really going to have to sit and think about this. And you're going to be sitting here like, oh, shit. Like, that's really, like, crazy. But can you name, like, one or two things that, like, as a kid now, and you're, like, older now. Like, how old are you now? Uh, 21. 21. Yeah. My fault if I had to, My fault. I didn't want to, You're like, trying to call me old. Nah, nah. Ooh, you said disrespectful. Ain't 21. <laughs> but, yeah, so 21 years old. Probably saying when he was, like, 12. Like, coming up in the world, young black queen woman, you know. What are some things that change, like, your perspective of life? Like, tell me a little about that. Mm, you was not lying when you said that was a good question I got to mm. think about. Mm, something that changed my perspective. Mm. I'm sorry, bro, but, like, that's that's a really good question. That is a good question. Okay. Um, I would definitely say, like, wearing – it's not necessarily my – natural hair but like yeah i would say wearing my natural hair it's something that wasn't really like i guess you could say like um it wasn't really taught to me like my mom used to perm my hair when i was younger so i want to say once i got about seventh eighth grade i told her i wanted to go natural because mm-hmm. when i used to go over my friend's house all of them would have these natural hair products and i never could use them because my hair wasn't natural and I saw, like, the way that their natural hair was. And it was, like, so pretty and curly and long. And I was like, yeah, I want hair like that. And I literally told my mom, I was like, yeah, girl, I'm going natural. And she was like, well, if you go natural, you got to take care of yourself. And I was like, okay. So I, what, the, what is that even supposed to mean, take care of yourself? Like, like, that means, like, when it comes to, like, you know, different natural hairstyles, I like always oh, washing okay. my hair. Like, I, I was responsible for that. So I was like, okay. So I went on YouTube. I learned how to like flat twist and, you know, I already knew how to braid. I don't know how to corn roll though. I ain't going to lie. Don't, <laughs> don't cancel me. Okay. I don't know how to corn roll, but Ooh. I know how to like flat twist and, you know, stuff like that. And literally like me and my dad, my dad worked with me. He helped me with my hair. Um, and I started, you know, my hair was at my ears when I was in about like seventh grade. I want to say seventh, eighth grade. And now, like, my hair is almost halfway down my back, so. 
Shit, how you think I feel, bro? My locks was like right here, bro. Okay, not, yeah. Shake your dress. Shake your dress. <laughs> Start touching my neck. Anybody can tell me nothing, man. Man, man, with the the lock, y'all, y'all funny, bro. Let, let the me start the locks. <laughs> let me tell you, but quick, quick, quick disclaimer, bro. Before before dreads was even a thing, I already had mine like December of twenty twenty, like going in. So before dreads was even a thing, I had mm-hmm. mine already. So I, I already beat the little the phase everybody else is going through right now, where they trying to get the little starter locks and stuff. Mm-hmm. That should be funny because they be like shake your dreads and them just be like little tiny little coils. And okay, shit. you know not everybody got hang time and you know inches like you. They gonna get there like two more years for sure. <laughs> like <laughs> that's the thing about black hair, bro. It locks, so it locks by itself. So like it just it does what it does. Right. But for you and your hair, like you wanted to go natural with some like good natural styles, like use more because I know every little girl probably had like some bees in their hair, some little braids and stuff, like little barrettes, little butterfly barrettes. <laughs> I shit. definitely had that. So. I had that. <laughs> Um, natural hairstyles. Mm-hmm. I like the mini twist. Mini twist on natural hair is so cute to me. Um, bantu knots. It's a very slept bantu on. Knots. Yes, it's a very slept on hairstyle. It's so cute. Like I think it. Like to me, it literally only fits black women. Like I don't think no one can really pull it off except the black woman. Mm-hmm. And when I had like bantu knots, like. It, you some people may think it looks weird, but like for me, like I love it just because it's just I don't know. It just gives like black queen. And I'm like, yeah, girl. Don't ask me how I know about this style, but do you? <laughs> what you face? What you gonna say? A thirty inch bust down? Nah, I was gonna say like, how do you feel about like black women when they get like fox locks? Oh, like fox! Oh, I love those. Those are cute too. I love fox locks, soft locks, butterfly locks, any type of locks. any type of locks. I love them. I love them. And what you know about that? Shit, I know. <laughs> bro, I grew up around a lot of girls, bro. Uh, I know, like they like the tips was burnt, so you had to like burn the tips so they <laughs> stay, and then to unravel them. You had to like, yeah, bro, it was a lot, what? bro. Yeah, I know my ish, bro. Like when someone uh, asked me, like, crazy. someone asked me, like, bro, like what what color should I get my nails? I'm like, bro, you should get the the French tip, like blue. And they'd be like, how the hell do you know what a? French how do tip you is? know what? Uh, hold on, wait a minute, <laughs> wait a minute, because how you know all of this? I'm like, bro, I grew up around a lot of girls, bro. Like you pick up on some things, like. Mm. What's your favorite hairstyle on a on a woman? Shit, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't know. I love locks. I love locks on a woman. I feel like any natural hair in a woman looks good, to be honest. Why with is you. it natural hair though? Like, what? What is? Let me ask oh, wait, you. On. Hold on, no, no, no. let nah. me freeze. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay. Natural looking style on a woman. Okay, but like, I'm gonna ask you. Why do men? Why do y'all always put the emphasis on the natural? Like, it's nothing wrong with it at all. But it's just like some women just. I don't really like natural hairstyles. So what what is the big thing about, oh, yeah, like, you know, the messy bun or, you know, ooh. yeah, see, <laughs> look, look, look how heavy, ooh, like the messy bun or, you know, the soft locks or, you know, knotless braids. Like, why, not even knotless braids because that, that ain't natural for real. But, like, why don't y'all like the bust downs and the wigs and, you know, like, what's wrong with that? Or even I heard even men don't like bobs. Like wow, what yeah, is that, ra- no? That's wild. That's what is wild. what's up with like you tell me? You explain to me. Okay, I'm a, I'm gonna tell you what I heard from somebody, and I'm gonna tell you what I heard like what I actually like think. Mm-hmm. I heard from somebody that they don't like the fact that y'all change y'all color up. Like you know how you have like a, a skin tone, mm-hmm. and you probably go for the hair with your skin tone or like you know according. Mm-hmm. They just don't like red hair like all that's like all that stuff it's like bro just what's ever under there just rock that that's what someone i know says okay now what i'm gonna say is <laughs> don't be careful what you say <laughs> be careful what i'm gonna say is that i don't have i don't really have a problem with like your style like however you feel is however you feel um it's the same thing for dudes like if you have like short hair like you're literally in the process of getting your locks so take your time like whatever whatever but i don't really care for all that mm-hmm. it's just it's nothing wrong with wearing your like natural hair at least once or twice in your life like it's, it's no way you're going through like your whole life in the beginning stages from like zero to ten and you're wearing your natural hair whatever like messy bun whatever and then over time it's just like you just revert from that like you're just like no more natural hair you're wearing wigs and stuff like that like let me see what's under there for real like 
Let's see. Like, it don't matter if it's little, like, cornrows, bro. Like, we could work with that. <laughs> a, couple, a little bit of hair oil. Not you the Allen Iversons. Like, we could, turn, we could turn this into something for real. Like, let's see. Like, let's see what you're working with. <laughs> that's, that's, that's how I think. Like, I'm trying to see what's under there for real. That's so crazy. I mean, I'm, I don't have no issue. I think I don't have no issue with my natural hair. I love my natural hair. Um... I don't really know what my natural hair type is, but I love it. So I wear mine all the time. Like, I think I honestly wear my natural hair more than I wear, like, braids, Mm -hmm. soft locks, you know what I'm saying, wigs. Like, I wear that more than anything because I think also with women sometimes, it's just, like, a confidence. Like, you'll see one lady, she going to have, you know, like, your uh, 90s afro or something. And, like, and a one girl be like, dang, like, you know, I would wear my natural hair, but it don't look like that. You know what I'm saying? And then it's like... And you know what? That's true, though. Like, people who are so, like, busy looking at other people and they're, like, development and go with their hair and stuff like that. Like, they just... Right. Try to cheat the process and go with something a little bit more like their style. You know what? I respect that. Yeah. You actually put that in a great perspective, too. A lot of y'all niggas need to understand that. Like, <laughs> 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 no. Yeah. A lot of y'all gotta understand that. Like, bro, it's okay, bro. Like, I, you know what? You know what? That's kind of the equivalent to dudes that be getting fake locks, bro. Mm. Like they'll like any little bit of hair. I've seen it. Like any little bit of hair, they'll uh, twist it, they'll braid it, or whatever, and then they'll get like some extra lock that they took from somebody else, and they'll put it on their hair. That's and I'm crazy. like, I wonder what they think of you when you come back the next day. And your hair is five <laughs> inches longer, like ten inches longer. Like, bro, how how they get that long? No, nah, that's crazy. Like the way y'all be feeling about women with natural hair. It's, like, similar to, like, females with, like, dreads and stuff. Like, me, I, I think I'm really getting out of my dreadhead phase. I'm not going to lie. It's starting to just die down a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. I'm, I don't know. I'm just getting older. I'm getting, you know, more grown, more mature. And I'm really starting to like guys that have, like, the low-top, you know, haircut with, like, you know, the facial hair. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know. It just, it really gets, I mean, I have nothing against, wait, I have nothing <laughs> against dreadheads, okay? I still love dreadheads. But I'm just saying, like, I feel like as a dreadhead, sometimes you really, you really, you can't have a haircut and then not have a retwist. That's, that's true. That I'm like, true. man, that is so crazy. I'm like, they be like, bro, I just got my haircut. I look good. Babe, yeah, your haircut look good, but where's your retwist? I can't even see your scalp no more. That's the, that's a that's a good thing to know because when I get my haircut, I'll be like, damn, I got a haircut but no retwist. Or I get the retwist with no haircut. And that's a horrible combo. I, it is, but I would rather I would rather I would rather my man have a retwist with no haircut. I swear I would. Because it just looks neater. neater yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't know, man. I don't know. Y'all, y'all men feel like y'all just need a haircut, like twenty four seven. Like I'm telling you, bro, a haircut, <laughs> a haircut for a man makes you glow different, makes you feel better, gives you confidence, bro. Like the same way how you get your hair done, bro. It's like you feel like you're like top five in the world, but that's how we feel. Like ain't no coming home. Now I'm playing. <laughs> when y'all ain't no coming home. Look, you like let me go to Ulta, let me go to Target, yeah. let me go to Starbucks. Now, the only thing I don't condone is the chalk, bro. I don't know where that, like, originated from. It's yeah, chalk, what? I didn't know your face was a whiteboard, but... I mean, when, chalkboard, but that's fine. <laughs> when people st- first started doing it, I was confused. I was like, are they ashy? Like... <laughs> you thought they was ashy? Yeah, I was like, are they ashy? Like, what exactly is this? Like, is this... And, and women find this attractive. I'm like... Hey, bro, that's beyond <laughs> me, bro. It's, it's the difference between, like, getting chalk and getting the blackout. The blackout, it makes your, like, cut look more cleaner. The mm-hmm. chalk is, like, I don't know what that, I have no idea. If someone can tell me what that's for, please do, because <laughs> I, like, I don't I have no idea what that's for. But yeah, I don't know. That's ugly. If we doing Wix, then, hey, talk to me. Talk to me about Wix, bro, because I got, look, I don't preferably <laughs> like them. <laughs> But they just look weird to me. Like, I don't I really, know. They're a Florida thing, if you ask me. They're sure. really a Florida thing. Because, like, in Texas, people don't have wigs. They, like, most people just had, like, the thought boy haircut, mm-hmm. if you know what that is. What is the thought boy haircut? Like, the thought. <laughs> it's like your hair, it's like, it's curly. And, mm-hmm. like, they used to use, like, the sponge or whatever to curl it. So we just call it, like, a thought boy haircut. But, like, that's what people in Texas have. I ain't see wigs. <laughs> Like, I'm like, where are you from? Florida. Makes sense. Like, Florida. you know, or 
isn't it like when your locks, like you don't comb your locks or get them like twisted and stuff? Like that's how it turns into a wig, right? Honestly, I thought wigs was just like combined locks. Like you just like crochet them together and then you just like make them super thick. But mm. then they just start looking nasty because like it's hard to wash. You have to like get deep in there. You got to like, it's a lot. Most wigs I see are like nasty. So I don't, <laughs> I'm sorry. I just don't be going with it for real. <laughs> but that's just me, bro. Why like, they be nasty? Oh, Lord. Nah, they do be nasty. I gotta see what you're talking about though, that boy haircut. Cause I do remember, I do remember the sponge from like 2016, mm-hmm. 2017. Every boy had that. Like, yes. In the middle of class, just I'm, going crazy. And I'm, I'm just looking like, bro, <laughs> go do that in the bathroom. I don't even want to see you do that in class. Like what? But before that though, it was like the dudes with the waves, and they always used to have their brush like. And that's annoying too. Teacher talking about something. Put your brush away. They just keep going. All day. Like, bro, you gonna brush your ears off? Like, <laughs> chill. <laughs> like, chill out, my boy. All right, bro. My fault. I just, yo, you just. That was funny. Because <laughs> I was one of them kids, bro. Like, it, bro Always it was, having your brush. Nah, I had a sponge, bro. Oh. I was fiending with the sponge. Yeah. Because on the box it said, like, bro, if you want to like get locks or you want to get like cool, nice looking hair, you just sponge, 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 right? In my in middle school, they had like. Every, bro, everyone had a sponge. Like, you come to school, like, bro, can I borrow your sponge real quick? My hair kind of messed up. It was kind of one of those type of things. Mm-hmm. So if I, when I had my sponge, my teacher would be like, if you touch your hair one more time, <laughs> you're getting detention. Oh, I'd you was like, one of them kids. Bro, I'm one of them kids. I used to sit there like this, like, just twirling my hair. Or I'm just, like, in my hair while I'm doing work. And I'm like, bro, if you can't answer the next question and you touch your hair one more time... You're calling t- your mother. Like if you if you went to middle school, middle school with me, bro, you know, bro. Like if you touch your hair, you're getting in trouble, bro. It was just and it was all the boys too. Like if you had a sponge, all the boys, like you was so, getting in trouble. I have never experienced that a day in my life, never. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, bro, like who are you to tell me I can't touch my black God given hair, bro? Like who are you? Were your teachers like black or white? Yes, they was black. Oh dang! And they had curly hair too. I just didn't want no nappy hair to be honest with you. But I wanted my I wanted my hair to look like something. Okay, but keep your hands out your head, bro. It's like it's like I had done it when I was like a baby. Like it was just like a natural thing to just like any little piece of hair, just like twirl it, play with it, you know. That's so funny. I'm sorry, bro. That's so funny. Well, but we got like a lot, a lot of it off track. Let's go back to the spreading yourself thin. This, that, and the third. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I know you personally, you do a lot on campus. Mm-hmm. Like, can you tell me some of the things that you've done like the last two weeks? Two weeks? Yeah, two weeks. Oh, I know you had the reality it. show. Yeah, I did. You had I a, did. You got a lot. You, got, you having a lot going on, bro. You're a busy <laughs> woman, bro, for real. I am. I'm just, you know, I'm just trying to keep something going for myself, man. Um, past two weeks, definitely finished up. Welcome back week for Cab. Mm-hmm. Cab. You know how that goes. <laughs> the drive behind CAU. Um, what else? Like you said, the reality show that I um that I was doing. Um, I finished that up. Um, dang, I'm trying to think. Stuff with Collegia one hundred. We got applications coming out. Mm-hmm. You know, being Lots a- is coming in there. Yeah. Very soon, very soon. Mm-hmm. I'm looking for it. <laughs> I'm looking for it. But doing that. So trying to get things right with applications. Um, today I actually was, we had a table in the student center, um, you know, just trying to encourage people, you know, to apply. Um, I know some people had questions about exactly like what is Collegiate 100. So, you know, just talking to them, explaining to them, letting them meet, like, you know, me as the president, mm-hmm. my e-board, um, my committee chairs, um, things like that. Uh, man, I'm trying to think of what else. You got a lot going on, bro. Man. Like, you're a busy woman, <laughs> for real. It's, it's a continuous cycle. I would definitely say that it's a continuous cycle. Being on Zooms. Um, oh, yeah, dang. Being on Zooms uh, just with different different things. Like, I don't – it's a lot. It's so much. I really do so much. I honestly have started to see that I forget what all I do because it's so much. Mm-hmm. And from the outside looking in, it's like you're like from the outside looking in, you're flourishing, bro. You got a lot going on for yourself, for real. Thank you. But then, like to you, it's probably like, damn, like I need to do more. Like I feel like I'm not doing enough with my life, for real. Yeah. You feel like sometimes like you're just doing a lot and you're just going through the motions, and then someone from the outside is just like you're doing good, you're doing good, but whole time mentally you're just like, bro, I'm fucked, bro. Like, 
Man, absolutely. I mean, I tell anybody, like, they look at me like, oh, Trin, you're this great grand person, you're this and you're that. And I'm like, yeah, that's cool, but I'm like, you ain't see what I did to get to where I am today. I, I tell anybody I bust my ass for the things that I have going for myself, and that's mm-hmm. facts. Anybody that know me, no, I bust my ass for this shit. I have went sleepless nights. I have went, like, little to no sleep nights, like, literally, I have done it all. I mean, like, when it comes to, like, I would say my internship, like, I've been applying for internships since I was a freshman, a freshman. And I literally applied to so many internships when I was a freshman and I didn't get not one of them. And it broke my heart. And I was like, that's their fault. And for sure. That's their fault. Absolutely. I was, I was depressed. I was a freshman. I ain't know no better. I'm sad. I'm like, dang, you know, internships. I'm like, we ain't going to talk about that. It's okay. Right. I was like, you know, whatever. So then like that whole summer, whole summer, I was depressed. I didn't work. I didn't make no money. I literally just used to sit around the house all day, every day, like, mm-hmm. literally. Then, like, that summer, towards, like, going back to school, there was, like, this Amazon trip. It was called Amazon's Beyond the Yard. And I'm like, what's this? So I'm looking it up. I'm looking into it. And they're sitting here saying, like, yeah, like, it's a free, all-inclusive trip. You know, come learn information, not only about Amazon, but, like, you know, we have, like, you know, like, it's a HBCU trip. And it was like, if you, you know, get, you know, accepted to do it, then, you know, it's free. So I'm like, okay. So I apply. Like, I'm really praying and hoping that I get it. And so then I get it. And I'm like, yo, what? And I said, where, is, <laughs> where, where are we at this year? And they was like, it's in Washington, D.C. I was like, D.C.? Say no more. I was like, okay, all right, bet. So I do it. You know, I go on the trip. I had such an amazing time from the people that I met, mind you, all HBCU students there, the people that I met from all these different HBCUs. I didn't even know some of the schools were HBCUs. I'm just saying, like, you know, both of my parents graduated from Gramlin, but yeah. I ain't know about, like, all HBCUs. I really just knew about, like, really the swag for real. Mm-hmm. But I went on a trip. I had a great time. I learned so many things. Um the theme of like the conference was building your future currency. And I'm thinking they finna be putting money in my pockets. So I'm like, Oh yeah, they finna tell me how to make money. Da, da, da. Yeah. And literally they got me to see, they got me to see that your net worth is your net work. As it should and be. that was, that's like the real shit that I learned throughout that whole conference. Like, I tell anybody that's that's where it started for me. I saw the people I was surrounded by, and I was like, "Yeah, I I gotta I gotta do better for myself." And you know, like you said, like even though I didn't get the internships, I also had to realize I was like, "Trinity, you ain't had no resume for real. <laughs> you ain't had, you had little no experience. You literally worked at Burlington, and that was like it. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying?" So I was like, "Yeah, man, like." I was like, yeah, I'm glad yeah. they closed those doors for me because I was just like, I honestly wasn't ready like I thought I was. But like looking at it now, I was like, yeah, I'm ready more than ever. No cap. But I definitely burned myself out. and I, I got to stop that because my peace matters more than anything. Of and course, I, I forget man. that at times. Like, I think people find it like so hard for people that's like actually like one with themselves. Like they like to be by themselves a lot more than they are around like a lot of people. And it shouldn't be a bad thing. But mm-hmm. I think like today, like people don't understand like people need their space and yeah. their time. Like they need to just like recuperate. Right. And when you're around a lot of people, you kind of lose yourself. Like I know, I think um, you for you, let's use, let's use you as an example. Right. Mm-hmm. You have your organizations, you have uh, schoolwork, you have um, you have to get sleep. You have a lot of things you got to do. Mm-hmm. Right. But when is Trinity by herself? Like, when does she ever like find the time to be like, OK, this is what happened today. Tomorrow is another day. <laughs> like, like when, when does that ever happen? Um, honestly, I would say, like, when I'm walking to class. That's so bad. It is. It's so bad. But (laughs) I'm just keeping it real. When I go to class, this time I just take to myself. I put my headphones on, listen to some music. Um, At night, when I'm (laughs) finna go to bed. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, I I really got to take care of, like, take care of myself better than what I'm doing now. Because now I think about it, like, I... I spend time alone, but people don't realize that 
there's times to where I'm spending it alone, but it's not necessarily like I'm just not doing anything. Like I could literally be in the middle of doing something for an organization or doing something for my internship. You know what I'm saying? Like doing all these different things. So yeah, I'm not gonna lie, I don't really have a time really where I can just say like, okay, Trinity, you know, like this happened. Yeah. You know, like this is this happened. It's still gonna be okay. We're just gonna learn from it. Like, you know, it's college students. We take ills, so many ills in one day. So and guess ills. what we gotta do? We gotta keep on going. <laughs> the way I see it, bro, if you put one L next to another L, it turns into a W. W. So Hey man, look, two L's is always gonna make a W, bro. That third time's a charm is some real, real ish for real. Right, real shit, some real shit. I think the only time I ever had like time to, to myself is really when I'm just like in the room in the library, bro. The li- I don't think people understand how blessed a library is for a college right. student. Right, <laughs> that's like that probably be like the only time you'll get like some peace and quiet. You could like probably take a little nap. Right. Do some work, get some stuff done and then go right back out into the field and do what you got to do. Like the library right. is like top tier. For any I do. Student. I do love the library. You know, Club Woody, it's not as bad as people make it out to be. Um, I ain't gonna lie. I used to be in Club Woody all the time when I was a freshman. Mm. They used to see me almost every day. <laughs> and then the older I got, the less they saw me because <laughs> the more busy I got. I ain't even had time to go in there no more unless I'm printing out something for uh, a class or something. What you got to say to people that's, like, busy all the time? I feel like you you probably still finding out yourself. But, like, mm-hmm. I feel like you're, like, probably the best person I know that can give <laughs> the best advice for that. Because, shoot, the amount of times I've seen you walking, I'd be like, hey, Trent. And they'll be like, oh, I got to go. I got to do this. I'm like, what's up, my guy? And I'm like, okay, okay, I got to go here. I'm like, I'm, like, I'm going to text you, though. I'm like, damn. <laughs> I'm like, damn, bro. This girl is, like, busy. Like, she got stuff she got to do for real. So what you, what you got to tell those people? Mm. I would just say for like people that are busy, always make time for yourself. Always remember your why, why you do the things that you do. Because sometimes when we get so busy, we can't forget why we do the things that we do. So I would say never forget your why. Never forget yourself. Mm -hmm. Always stay humble. Like never forget where you came from, never forget your story. Just always remember you weren't always who you are today. You were not always the person that you are today. That's deep. That's, that's true and that's deep. Mm-hmm. A lot of people forget it. It's it's the truth, but, like, I literally have to, I have to humble, like, uh, this guy. That, like, <laughs> I'm so serious. I literally have to humble this guy, like, I was doing a reality show with him. And, like, we cool, but I was really just being honest with him. And I literally told him, I said, bro, you want me to be honest with you? I said, bro, they keep you around for entertainment purposes and entertainment purposes only. Mm-hmm. I was like, they low-key not keep you around because you're actually, like, good at the task and the challenges that we have. I was like, they're literally just keeping you for entertainment purposes. And literally after I said that and after I went home and I thought about it, I felt bad. Because I was like, I don't want people to see me as the person to where it's like, oh, yeah, Trin, like, she going to tell you this and tell you that and try to put you down. It was just in a more so, like, humbling space. And I was just trying to tell him, like, this is not to hurt your feelings. I was like, I'm just literally telling you this because I want to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. And I was like, and I'm trying to show you to just stay your genuine, authentic self. Like, stop trying to fake it for these people and stop trying to, you know, do this and do that. And he literally told me, he was like, Trent, like, bro, he was like, you are just such, like, a genuine, humble, authentic, great person. And he was like, how do you do it? Like, just being all around. Like, how do you do it? Like, being around all these people, like, the cruel world that we live in, and you still, you know, being you, like, how do you do that? And I was like, I don't care what other people doing. They going to do them, and I'm going to do me. Real shit. They ain't making me no money. That's how I look at it. I'm like, you making me money? No? Nah. Okay. I'm like, okay. How about you helping me? Are you benefiting me? Nah. Nah, okay, okay. Nah. Like, literally straight like that. Just, my main thing is just to don't forget your why and be humble. That's real, though, because some people actually do need to be, like, humble. Like, there's a lot of people who, like, grew up, like, say, for instance, people who grew up looking good their whole life. Some mm-hmm. people grew up ugly, and then, like, they when they start looking good, and people be like, bro, you look good. Right. And you just like, you must be lying to me. Mm-hmm. And but but they're being for real. Like you look mm-hmm. good, but that's just the humbling experience. Like you have to come from somewhere to know like how to move. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the that, way that you told that me. was me. That was me growing up. <laughs> I had dudes telling me like, "Yeah, you ugly." Man, look at me now. What's up now? 
I'm like, no, nah, I'm good. You ain't fuck when you wear it back then. <laughs> <I'm lying out. laughs> Real talk, though, because they don't understand. Like, bro, you have, like, it's no way that you think that you're going through your life doing something correct. And then when someone tells you, like, this is what you need to change, that's constructive criticism, not as, like, I'm trying to hurt you or bring you down. Like, the way you told, bro, you said, like, bro, look, this is what they got you here for. And that probably changed his whole mindset. Like, okay, like, this is how I got to move. It on. did. Like, oh, my gosh. I can't wait for this reality show to drop. Because I promise you, like, after the conversation I w- that I had with him, you would see the difference in mm-hmm. him on the show after I told him that. And I had an honest, open conversation with him. Like, just me and him. Like, you'll see so much in him just change. And I was just like... He was just like, bro, Trent, like, you know, thank you so much. Like, I really needed that. You know, I was like, of course, of course. And I was like, I'm sorry. I was like, maybe I should have came about it in a different manner, in a different way. Yeah. But I was like, I just wanted to be honest with you and keep it real with you because I was, I feel like nobody else was going to say it to you. So I guess I'll be the one to say it. You feel like, all right, let's, let's keep it like, let's see what it go like both ways, right? Mm-hmm. You feel like it's a burden to like tell somebody like how you're feeling about a certain situation? No. No? No. Like, Not at all. Like, if you're, like, you know, going through it and people, like, ask you, are you okay, are you okay? The first initial thought is to be like, yeah, I'm okay. But, like, have you ever, like, went to someone, like, real, real friend and said, you know what? I'm just really going through it. Like, that's, like, vulnerability. Yeah. Like, you ever been, like, really vulnerable with somebody and told them, like, how you feel and stuff like that? Absolutely. Absolutely. I feel like if you can't be like that with your friends, then they not your friends. Like, my friends... No, they can come to me about anything. It ain't no judgment in the world, because guess what? I'm not perfect. I make mistakes, too. But I that's why, I, back to the whole, you got to be careful who you call your friends, because it's just like, you know, you could be coming to them in a place of vulnerability the whole time, like they low-key trying to plot on you. Hey, man. And they low-key <laughs> throwing that shit back up in your face. I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, Damn, I came to you about that in a humble experience. In a, you know, like, a, am sad. Like, I don't have nobody to go to. And, you know, with us being college students, we don't always want to talk to our parents. Because our parents, guess what? They're going to be worried about us. We ain't got time for you to be worried about me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that's, like, why we got our friends and we are careful who we have around us as friends. So, yeah, absolutely. If you can't be, like, just honest with your friends, them is not your friends, honey bun. That's true, because real friends is hard to find nowadays, for real. Like, they are. Like, when someone... <laughs> bro, when someone asks me, like, what do you want out of this, like... It doesn't matter if it's a friendship, relationship, it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. If someone asks me, like, what do you like to do? What is this, that, and the third? I'm like... Bro, you're asking me all these questions just to act like the perfect friend or girlfriend for like two weeks, mm-hmm. and then after that, you're gonna switch up for sure. See, I'm glad. I'm glad you brought that up. I'm, I'm really gonna... glad you brought that up because <laughs> <laughs> I personally, I was telling somebody like, if a guy asks me, what exactly do you look for in a guy? That's a setup question. I'm not telling you. Both ways, that's a setup question. I'm, <laughs> I'm not telling you. And when I say I'm not telling you, hear me out when I say this. I'm not telling you, I'm not telling you because I'm just trying to be mean. I'm trying to be real. I'm trying to be an asshole. I'm not telling you because I want you to be your genuine, authentic self. And if I'm sitting here telling you this is what I look for in a man, I expect my man to open my doors. You know what I'm saying? I will hope that my man pays for things when we go out. Like, of course, I'll go, you know, half on him. Or, you know, I if we go to the movies, he buy the tickets, I buy the snacks. You know what I'm saying? If I tell you that, guess what? You're going to live up to those expectations for a good few weeks. And then guess what? Your true colors are going to start showing. Right. So that's why I say I'm not telling a man what I look for because I just want you to be a genuine, authentic self. It shouldn't matter what I look for in a man because guess what? If I really, truly like you, I'm liking you because that's just who you are. Not because of a persona that you're trying to live up to or expectation that you're trying to, you know, uh, live up to because that's what I like and vice versa. Like, you know, if, you, if a man asks me like, well, if I ask a man, what you look for in a female and he like, Oh, well I would like my girl to cook. And then all of a sudden, okay. So I'm cooking, I'm cooking, I'm cooking. And then after time I just stopped cooking. You know what I'm saying? So like nine times out of 10, no, you know what? You did actually went in for real. Like, cause I, the way your voice dropped, I knew you went in right there. Like, that's not like, that's not like, that's not like personal experience right there. It, it is. It that, is. That's not like personal experience right there. It is. It definitely is. I, it humbled me because I. it happened to me. Like, I'm telling the dude, like, oh, yeah, like, you know. I was like, I like a guy, like, who he's nonchalant, but he's not too nonchalant. 
And guess what? He was nonchalant, but not too nonchalant yeah. for about two weeks. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, he just don't give a fuck. And he just straight nonchalant. And you know what I'm saying? And he gave sneaky to me. Mm-hmm. So that's what I'm saying. Like, I just want guys to just be their genuine, authentic self. Like, honestly, like you said, like, it's vice versa. Like, if a man asks you, what do you look for in a guy? Or a female asks you, what do you look for in a female? That's a setup. Oh, it's uh, like it's it's fate, it's fate. I but I really believe that so heartily, bro. Cause, bro, the amount of times I would be like, someone would be like, "What do you like in a woman?" I'll be like, "I like a woman that has a nice personality. I like a woman that like, I don't want to say cook clean all that. Like that's so like bogus. Like I feel like we should all cook and clean. I like, didn't know that was like you know. I didn't know that was like a re- it's not, not a requirement, but. You know what I'm saying? I thought that's just something people do on a bank. Like, y'all don't cook? Y'all, what y'all eat? Y'all don't clean? Your, your house dirty? Your house nasty? So that's how like, I think about it. A real man, bro, a real man going to know how to, like, cook, clean, do all those things. So, like, when he get a woman, it's like, shit, they flourishing together now. Like, right. they, they know how to both cook and clean. <laughs> right. To, like, you know? Like a power couple. But as me, they should be. Me personally, I know how to cook, I know how to cook a little something. Like, oh, really? What's your best meal? Shit, the best go-to <laughs> meal. It would, it would have to be for breakfast or dinner. 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 Perfect. All right. Dinner, <laughs> it would have to be definitely chicken, mac and cheese, collard greens, cornbread. You know, like that's it right Oh, there. you frying the chicken? Huh? You you frying the chicken? Of course. You, you know how, do you know how to cut up some collard greens? Yes, bro. Do you? Where Everything, you learn that bro. from? I told you I grew up a lot, a lot of women, bro. Mm. You know, cook, them cookout, look, them mm. cookouts where they be like, ha, can you come help this, that, and third? I'm like, I'm paying attention. Like, I'm like taking notes. Like, okay. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not, because when I'm, I'm, I kid you not, growing up and I seen like all my aunts and my mom cooking, I'm like, damn, bro, like the dudes outside barbecuing, that's cool. But like the women really be in the kitchen, like slaving away, like faces like hot and stuff. I'm like, bro, I don't want this for my girl at all. Like, Aww. I want to be there, like cooking for her type shit. Like if, if it if a meal needs to be made, I'm gonna make it regardless. So mm-hmm. it's like it is what it is. Yeah. But I'm not gonna let her just like cook every meal. She still gotta work, and then I'm coming home and I was like, "What's for dinner?" Like that's really some bull. I I hate seeing that on TV for real. Yeah. Like I don't like seeing that at all. Me personally. Yeah, I agree. I think for me, like I'm a female. I just I like to. I personally like to cook, and I think for me right now, I like to cook because I like I like to eat like. I may be skinny, but I like to eat, you know what I'm saying? Like and, it's, <laughs> and it's just like, you know, I like learning like how to cook different things and, you know, like different recipes and different types of food. Cause you know, I like trying new foods. So I just, I didn't really know like cooking and cleaning is something that like females need to know how to do or, you know what I'm saying? I just thought that was the way of living. I thought so too, bro. <laughs> it's like, it's kind of like that general junk. I'm like, bro, I don't believe in none of that, bro. Like, yeah. Let's, like, like people love to preach 50-50, but then when it's time to be put in a 50-50 role, it's like... Shit, sure, it, like, that, that is something else that makes me mad. I hate 50-50. hate when people say that. Because if y'all both 50-50, that equals 100 versus both of y'all coming 100-100. If you 50-50, that means both of y'all half ass and y'all not giving y'all all. And if you're going to be in a relationship, you're going to be with this person to give your all no matter what. You know what I'm saying? And there are going to be days where you may be able to give 40 and they got to give 60. Or, you know, they may give you 30 and you got to give, you know, 70. It just it, it just depends on the relationship and what works best for y'all. But at the beginning, both of y'all need to come 100-100. Fuck all that 50-50. That's Real. why shit don't work out. <laughs> hey, look. On that note, I'm going to need y'all to come 100-100 on this video, all right? <laughs> I appreciate y'all for tuning in. I appreciate Trinity for coming out. That's going to conclude today's episode. Y'all stay blessed. Peace.